Hello and welcome to Euphoria, the podcast all about the great glam and garish from Eurovision past. My name is Roland Bodnam and as ever I am joined cross-continentally by the Petra me to my pretty much everything. It's Isabel <laughs> Tillman. Hi hey, oh, Isabel, how are you doing? That's so nice. I'm okay, <laughs> thanks mate. I'm good. I'm it, sat in is... me... Um, in me, oh, well, this is actually this is a good explanation of we can explain what we're both doing right now because there's a five yeah. hour time delay between us. Yeah. So it is Saturday uh, for me. It is Saturday at six thirteen p.m. And because yeah. I'm a fucking wild child, um, <laughs> I am sat on a rug on my carpet with the cat behind I'm me a- wearing my pajamas. Uh, well, weirdly, it's one thirty over here. And I am also sat in my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> we're so similar. I uh, mean, we, you can take, you can put us on different continents. We're going to do the same uh, so thing. So yeah, this is the first like cross continental one we've done. We we did two episodes this season where we were uh, by pure chance, pure luck together. But this is the first one we're doing. I'm in New York. You're in you're in London. Uh, yeah. How's it going over there? All right. Yeah, it's going really well. Yeah, it's all right. I've had a long week. I'm pretty tired. My yeah. Alice was with me this weekend from LA. So hey, I had one, nice. of, one of your lot, uh, except she's also English, but she's um, <laughs> she was staying with me yesterday and then we hung out today and then I did I hit I hit the shops with Benji, hey, our old nice. friend Benji. Um, I bought a new towel from Muji. How grown up wow. am I? It was well, on sale, towel, right? Yeah. Right, yeah, no, they're nice, right? It was meant, it was meant yeah. to be 30 quid. I got it for like 8.95. Wow. Bargain, bargain. mate. So Muji's if you've got a Muji well. near you, there's some nice towels on offer. Uh, we get down to Muji. Get Not down to Muji. Isabel's top tips. <laughs> so it, so actually we've timed it quite well because we were going to record this earlier and it was going to be slightly on the edge of acceptability for having a drink. But it's 1.30 over here. So yeah. I think that, that's a fine time to have a beer on a Saturday, right? You can start drinking at 11, I think. Yeah, that's fine. And are you gonna are you gonna, are you gonna join me in having a beer as well? Mate, I'm ready. Okay, so let's um for anyone who wants to know, I'm having a Sierra Nevada tropical torpedo. What are you having? <laughs> God, you're so much more cultured than I am. <laughs> I'm having a Sainsbury's own brand. Um wow. one of one of those little stubby lagers that your mum buys at Christmas. <laughs> it's it's like two worlds. Uh, <laughs> So shall good. we shall we open them on mic for everyone? Yeah, do you want to go first? All right, here we go. I'm going to do mine. Oh, oh that was oh. all right. That was quite nice. Go on, you do yours. Okay. Did you get? Very nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, did you hear any of that? Very good. Oh, okay, cheers, cool. mate. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh. Cheers, chin chin. Mine's <laughs> French, at least. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, no. It's got well, it's not it. actually. It's, it's oh, sorry, okay. no. It's called Saint Savoir, right? But then you look at yeah. it and it says Continental Style Lager, brewed, yeah, brewed in Scotland. <laughs> Scotland's still a foreign country, so that's fine. Um, they, they ain't in you Eurovision, had, though. Yeah. If you hadn't noticed, uh, by the way, listeners, it's not a Thursday, and it's not been two weeks since the last episode. But if you're good at counting are, and you know what day it is, you'll have noticed all those things. <laughs> you will, if you're aware of your surroundings and anything. If you have uh, any sort of sense of the world, yeah, you will be yeah, aware yeah. that these things have taken place. The, the reason for this, dear listeners, is the fact that just a few days ago, the entrance to UK's national final, Eurovision You Decide, were announced. And uh, we couldn't possibly leave it any longer without um, no. giving our opinion because we love giving our opinion, right? Always. I'll give mine even unwarranted. Even unwarranted. Even so when told do- to stop giving it, I'll continue <laughs> you giving just it. just keep giving your opinion. Love giving an opinion. Uh- about being told to stop. Um, we're going to do a um, mini foria today. So uh, we did one a couple of weeks ago. We're going to do another mini foria, um, similar to how we did last year. So we're going to go through the entries. We're going to find out a little bit about each act and give our thoughts on who we think will give the UK its best chances at the Eurovision final in Lisbon. It's very exciting as well, isn't it? It is very exciting. I mean, it is Eurovision is always very exciting. Mm. However, after listening to all the songs, uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh-oh. I'm not. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be not blunt, blunt quite early. I'm not very excited for our prospects. <laughs> oh, wow, interesting. Well, I think uh, maybe we yeah. should. Shall we? Shall we get started then, Isabel? <laughs> 
get started, Roland. So I emailed you a list. Yeah. Uh, we can go in. Do you want to go in that order, or is there an order that you would prefer to let's go? Would you prefer to get flip, one out of the way? F- let's flip first? the order. Flip the order. So you want to start? Okay. So we are going to start uh, with Raya with the song "Crazy." You may- So before we go into our uh, our opinions on the song, Isabel, would you like to know a little bit about Raya? Um, I would, I would indeed. <laughs> okay. What would it be like <laughs> if I said no? That would be fun. Yeah, just be like no, move on. Um, so yeah, so Raya has years of professional performance experience. She's a singer, dancer, and a, a professional DJ as well. Triple threat. Triple threat. No, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. She has uh, done backing vocals for Hertz. She's danced for Little Mix. And has Wait, who's on fo- IT- did backing vocals for who? Uh, Hertz. I don't know who that is. No, I think they're like a sort of one of those cool pop bands that kind <sighs> of cool people like because it's cool pop. Mm. Um, but yeah, she has done a load of stuff. She's performed in loads of different places. But my favourite quote that uh, she uh, says is is the question, and this is the one that sort of pulled up quite a lot of good quotes from all of the singers, uh, all of the performers, is the question, tell us some things people might not know about you. Oh, God, this, this (laughs) this is never, this never gets... A good answer. Go on. Well, it's it's really funny because they all start with a sort of normal thing, and then like the last quote is always like a bit of like a left field one. So she, so her ones are like, growing up, I always dreamed of being a radio presenter. I used to record weekly mix shows in my bedroom. Uh, blah 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 blah. And I sucked my thumb religiously until last year. <laughs> just great. Just in case we wanted to know. Great. That Raya sucks her thumb. Uh, so give give us your quote then that you uh, that you've. Uh, pulled up. So on the bbc.co.uk website with the You Decide entries, it says, Raya says about her song, it's extremely catchy and upbeat with a really fresh and commercial feel. It's all about that new guy or girl who you can't get out of your head no matter how hard you try. Mm. Mm. I, I mean, that sort of, that could just describe pretty much most Any songs, song. right? Yeah, like 90% <laughs> of songs, pretty much. Most of the songs. Uh, what did you think of the song, Isabel? Oh, man. It's the same, like, I think we had a similar problem last year with the You Decide mm. entries, which mm. is that there's so much repetition in the lyrics. Like, yeah. Christ almighty, if we're going to take this, as we've said before, take this seriously in the same way that, like, the Swedes do. Or, like, yeah. I'm not just the, you know, I know everyone gets fed up there, everyone, like, Swedish and Sweden always use, the, like, the be-all and end-all view of vision, but they are bloody good at it. They're very good. Um, like, this, we need to write songs that actually have lyrical content in them. You just can't say the same words over and over again. Who are you on my mind? You're on my mind. You want me making me crazy? You're making me crazy, but I'm not crazy. You're making me. Cra- you're on my mind. You're making me crazy. Oh my fucking! Like the song makes me a bit fucking crazy <laughs> listening to it. It's so tedious. Yeah, it's got a chorus, but it also has a pre-chorus which it repeats. So it kind of has <laughs> basically a verse and a chorus which it repeats every time. Um, I I didn't want to like this song, but I yeah. started liking it uh, the more I listened to it. And I think I think in my head it sounded like the sort of song that um, someone like Polly Genova would sing. Uh, it's got that kind of like ooh ah like that kind of stuff. And I think that that works. But I I, I agree with you. The problem with it is is that it's bloody repetitive. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like you wouldn't want to hear that again and again. No, and it'll be. I mean, interest- I literally don't want to hear it again <laughs> at all. It'll be interesting seeing her on stage as well because she's only five foot one. So whether she'll be able to, like, you know, take ownership of the stage and fill the stage as well, it will be it will be another question. And that was the uh, ear sizeist. I'm five foot two, oh. and I take ownership of every stage. <laughs> you absolutely. Even if do, there's but- not a stage, I will make sure that, that there is a stage. But you're very, very special, Isabel. So you know, I'm just Thank saying, you. not everyone has the ability to. But uh, I wouldn't worry about I wouldn't worry about that in terms of like height. But I just no, think I, that I, she's I, not been like she's got a perfectly good voice in terms of yeah. the, you know what what she's got here. She looks very lovely in the picture. But yeah, she's been given a duff song there. 
Well, there we go. We'll we'll move on from Raya then. We've signed her, consigned her to the bin of. Uh, you don't think she'll win? <laughs> no. Do you? Okay. All right. No. Cool. We're going to move on. So next up in our list is one Suri with the song Storms. Hey, hey brother, don't give up. So again, we're going to have a little look at who uh, this Suri woman is. Uh, she has uh, classical roots in piano, voice, and oboe. She's one of those who decided to learn oboe um, when she was younger. Um, however, she she she's sort of done that typical, fairly, I would imagine, well-off uh, white person thing to do, <laughs> and she's gone to the Royal Academy of Music. She's performed for the likes of Prince Charles at the Royal Albert Hall, blah, 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 blah. However, don't write her off just yet because she does have prior Eurovision experience. Mm -hmm. She was the backing vocalist and dancer for Loïc Notet at Eurovision 2015. Hottie. And she also uh, was the musical director for Blanche's City Lights just last year. So she definitely has Eurovision... uh, um, what's the word? She, she's been... Clout. Clout, yeah. She has Eurovision yeah. calibre. Um, I think both of them were good songs to be involved in. They were good songs to be involved in and it clearly knows she, you know, it clearly shows, or despite the, um, despite City Lights being a fairly, you know, uh, minimalist performance, yeah. um, you know, she she has uh, awareness of what, what needs to happen in, in, in uh, at Eurovision. Yeah. What, what do you think of that song, Isabel? So, so positives, right? Okay, okay. Positives. Let's start Posi- with positives. We'll start with positives. <laughs> yeah. Um, positives. She has a lovely haircut. Mm-hmm. I'm a very, I'm a very big fan. As, as um, you'd be unsurprised to hear of a woman <laughs> with a crop, a cropped hairdo. Yeah, Love it's good. It. She looks great. Um, she looks great. Yeah. Um, it uses the word storm a lot, which we, which as we, we know, we found out last week. It's very good for Eurovision. People love Absolutely. to hear a storm. A storm yeah, in do. storm Drama. specifically in like your eyes. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. storm it says it a lot. Great. Negatives. Okay. One, we do say the word again, repetition, guys. Like she says mm. the word storm a lot. And again, this is similar to the last one, in that there's like the the bridge to the chorus is basically the it's, same as the chorus. Yeah, so they just repeat it. So you're just repeating the same lyrics over and over again. Again, yeah. tedious, gets a bit tiring. Yeah. Um Secondly, spread your love to me sounds like a euphemism <laughs> for like open your legs. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I don't know if that that would that was necessarily representative of all people who will be listening to Eurovision uh, that night. No, but, but now everyone place. who's listened to this won't be able to well, forget about yeah, it. Well, no, that's in your head now. You've spoiled their chances by just putting that in everyone's yeah, head. Spread uh, your love, love. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, that's that's fair. And in a song like that would work well in a song uh, uh, like Slavko's from last year where he's talking about spreading your love. That would work. But this song kind of, there's not much other innuendo in there, is there? To, to no. She doesn't seem like the sort to be putting spreading your love and, and you know, let's ride our rockets, etc. into a song. No, it's not. No. I mean, I'm not... I'm not wild about the lyrical content, to be honest. Yeah. Like, the song itself is, I think... I think we'll do very well. I think yep. potentially this is a winner for you to decide. Okay. Um, yep. And I don't think it will completely flop yep. at Eurovision. But the lyrics are a bit fucking wet. Like there's a bit that mm. in there about chasing rainbows. It, it, it is a bit wet. And uh, like I would say that the the actual melody of her singing is quite Scandi where it goes like boom, boom. Yeah. Like that's very Scandi. That's something yeah. you expect to hear from like a Swedish entry or a Norwegian yeah. entry or whatever. So it does... And I think the one of the songwriters is Belgian. So it does have that sort of appeal, but it's not... And I think we can probably fairly well say this for all of the songs. It doesn't have the vibes of a winner, but it has the no. vibes of a song that would go into Eurovision. Yeah. And people would be like, yeah, that's a Eurovision song. It's a Eurovision song, but it's not a Eurovision winner. Which is kind of okay like i mean i know we're all hoping for a big eurovision winner but you know it's it's, why can't we do that like i'm i'm actually like to the point where i'm pissed off about this like (laughs) it's not even down to like 
whether or not Europe likes us or whether or not we get the votes, yeah. why aren't we putting in a Eurovision winner? Why why That's have we true. got this mindset of like because it definitely it cannot be that we have that the people on it. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe I'm giving them too much credit and thinking that they like it can't be that they don't have the skills to choose no. what a, what a Eurovision winning song sounds like. Yeah, because but if it is, there's the, that's the thing. It's like two things. Either they're not willing to put in a Eurovision winning song because they don't think they're going to win it, right? Or the yeah. team of people choosing this every time and writing these songs and putting it forward, whatever. Like the BBC uh, lot they've got. I'm sorry yeah. to say this to so like <laughs> with the Eurovision fandom like listening, you're probably going to be a bit pissed yeah. off that I'm saying this, but like. Maybe they're not fucking good at the jobs. Maybe they need yeah, to place it in terms of who they are. Right. Maybe they don't have the right skill set anymore to choose what a winning Eurovision song sounds like. Because yeah. as with last year, it was like, there were some good, you know, there were some fun songs in there. There were some songs that I didn't hate in there. Yeah. There were some songs that sounded like Eurovision-y songs. Yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah. there was categorically, very clearly from the start, not a w- U- winning Eurovision entry. No. And when you but listen we- to all the different, like the varied ones, that you, when you're listening to things like, you know, you watch things like Melody Fest or any of the other um, countries, uh, you know, their song decision competitions, when you go going through it there's such a wide variety of the songs that are in there that yeah it means that you've got a really good choice as the mm. public and as as that country's you know panel of people choosing it to be able to say we want that style of song this year whereas yeah. it seems like we year after year just trump out the same fucking stuff it sounds <laughs> well, like think- if you you could mix this year if it, if next year you mixed some of these entries with some of last yeah. year's ones like I just, they'd all sound the same to me. Yeah. And but, but if you just put them in again for next year, I'd be like, "What? Well, this is well, they all sound the same." I don't know. Like, <laughs> I think that the argument not. would be from some people is that you know, and we've had this conversation with people where they've said, "Well, look, this is a multi-year process, and the fact that this year we're entering songs that sound like." Eurovision songs from respectable Eurovision countries, but not necessarily winners, is probably progress from where we were two, three, four. Yeah, years and at ago least they're we... not all like old X Factor contestants this year. I'll say yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. But and also, you know, it's not Electro Velvet, and it's not. <laughs> oh my sorry god! To say, like Jake, Jake yeah. and Josh or whatever it is. So, you know, at least at least we're getting that far. But I'm I'm with you in terms of it. It does feel a bit like oh. We, it, there's we no winner of, but we'll, we have some of know. the biggest pop stars in the world coming out of our country not just now but like yeah. have always had yeah. some of the biggest pop musicians in the world come out of the UK and I, like how has none of that talent being like been utilised towards this like I just don't get it why do they keep putting in repetitive songs why do they keep using the same lyrics and over and over again like shall we shall we move on push it up <laughs> yeah like I've okay. had half a beer already, like, <laughs> she's ranting who's on next um, so next up we're gonna listen to Jazz Ellington great name uh, with the song You uh, <laughs> So that was Jazz Ellington's song, uh, You, there. Um, and a couple of interesting uh, things to know about uh, Jazz Ellington. He was in BBC's The Voice UK in 2012. So he uh, performed John Legend's Ordinary mm. People. You can see his voice would sort of work very well for that. Uh, after that, he performed various gigs and, and opened for Lauren Hill at one point. And then on the, on the BBC biog that they have for him, they have a fairly cryptic and uh, it goes, he also landed himself the opportunity to work with former The Voice coach Will I Am on a project for NASA. Now, we don't know what that project is. <laughs> but, but apparently, Jazz and Will I Am worked on a project for NASA. We, we just right. don't know. Right. So whether, so whether they're that's communicating good. Yeah, with they're, they're, invest, or... they're investing their money wisely, aren't they, <laughs> at NASA? We don't know what that was for. Maybe it was top secret, working with communicating Jesus. with aliens or something. Mm. Um, he he has a good voice, Isabel. He does have a good mm. voice. Mm. Yeah, yeah, has a good voice. Yeah. <laughs> but do they do they use it effectively, uh, Isabel? Do you have an opinion on that? I think that song is vile. Do you really? <laughs> I, wow. It gave me like a visceral, genuine <laughs> feeling of hatred inside listening to it. Oh I think God, the why? lyrics and the meaning behind that song 
It's well, nasty. I, it's not romantic. They've clearly no. written it thinking it's this is a romantic song. So basically, you know, anyone who's listening, if you haven't listened to the whole song yet, the song is yeah. called You and the song is about, so in, this is in Jazz's own words, the song is a story of two people in a relationship. The person telling the story, so Jazz singing it, yeah. compares yeah. everything that his partner does to the person that he's actually in love with. So the, the, the whole song is like, um, so, she, you know, she does this. She makes me cups of tea in the morning. She looks after me. She's really caring. She's really great. But she's never going to be you. She'll never match up to you. She's never as good as you. Maybe I'll tell her, actually, that I don't love her I properly won't. like you do. Like, yeah. No, I won't. No, I'll stick with her. She's great, but she's not you. What the but fuck? Is, that is not romantic. That under no, no circumstances, anyone's minds, in any situation... <laughs> especially with like <laughs> current climate of like men being fucking shit bags right true yeah. do not sing a song and expect people to think it's nice about the yeah. fact that you're going out with someone and who's really good by all you know by all means and purposes yeah. it's a really nice yeah. girl really good person um yeah. but uh, i don't really love her i like you better actually mate i'm with this one but i love you so you're right <laughs> That's the, awkward, the, isn't senti- it? the sentiment there is is not uh, good at all, really. It's he is the he is, he is the dickhead who's like, oh, I'm with this girl, but I'd rather be with this other girl, but I'm not going to do anything about it because it's just easier to not, right? I, like people have, I, I've been in that situation before. Yeah. A lot of people have been in that situation before. Yeah. You've been you've been going out with someone. I'm fair enough for like this is when I was in my teens, but like you've been going out with someone, you're well into them, and then you find out. Off of like your mate or one of their mates or a friend of a friend or whatever on a night out or something that actually yeah. they were like oh well I know that he's been trying to get his ex girlfriend back and you're like what the fuck what a dickhead like yeah. he's been over at my house every other night like this is ridiculous <laughs> like jazz I'm afraid to say this mate you're the dickhead in this scenario <laughs> you're not an old romantic you're not a crooner you're not doing something beautiful and wonderful okay you yeah. are a dickhead. Uh, and whoever yeah. <laughs> like, it's horrible i really he, hate it it might explain uh he says he's from uh southwest london which your hatred might uh line up Ooh. with the fact that i'm calling he's from clapham probably and, i would say uh, definitely you'll know your clapham. opinion about people from clapham <laughs> he's almost certainly from clapham isn't he mate <laughs> um lyrics aside do you think a song like this after uh, the winning song last year um, with uh, Salvador Sobral is the right direction to go or do you think it's it's effectively just following what the winner last year did and it's not going to do anyone any favours? Uh, I, I mean, it's not like the melody, you know, if you remove the local content from it, right? Yeah. Yeah. He has a nice voice. He's a good singer. He yeah. hits them notes well. The, the tune is perfectly lovely. Um, yeah. I don't, again, I don't think I mean, if it was completely different lyrics and it actually was romantic, yeah. um, rather than being a scumbag, um, <laughs> it would to it would be I think again still would be forgettable at Eurovision though because it's although it's it's you know it's meant to be very soothing and and lovely and calm I kind of in sort of in the same ilk as last year. Yeah, it's not. It's oh, again though. It's nowhere near in the same league. It is yeah, nowhere no, near completely. in the same league in terms of the in terms of the beauty behind it and the mm. music there that you know the the real like clear talent that was put into every aspect of the composing and the structure of last year's song and yeah. and Salvador's voice uh, you, it, it just there's no there isn't the comparison there nope. in terms of actually where like the beauty of the song what it sounds like to listen to I think again this would get lost in lost in the, the the jumble of everything else completely completely um, well let, let's move on isabel and my my way of jumping from one song to another is by uh just saying that one of the songwriters of this song laura white uh also wrote the song by one goldstone uh where the song called i feel the love should we have a quick mm-hmm. listen <laughs> yeah you love, we don't play by the book Uh, yeah, so that was, that was Goldstone uh, with I Feel the Love. Yeah, there's not loads about them that's particularly outstanding. They're all been in performance backgrounds. Uh, so they are made up of uh, three women, uh, Amy, 
uh, Helen and Rhiannon. Yeah, so they've all sort of had performing, musical performing backgrounds, TV roles and things like that. Um, they, a few things people might not know about them. Oh, Amy was once in a musical about Eurovision called Eurobeat, which also starred Rula Lenska and Lee Latchford Evans. Whoa, that yeah. is a big cast. That's a decent cast, That's right? That's a big cast. Uh, so that, I mean, that would be the Eurovision experience of Amy there. But um, what did you, what did you think of that? I was kind of in in it. I was yeah. kind of getting it yeah. through the fir- you know, through the verse, going into the chorus. I was like, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Like it started off a bit like, Meh. I was like, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. And then yeah. when the chorus starts, I'm like, no, you fucked it, ruined it. Yeah. That first opening line, I feel the love in my city. Oh, <laughs> it's just like guys. so like broad and generic, so and- boring. Yeah, what? yeah. And it just me- meaningless. It in just sounds city. a bit like. I feel the love everywhere. Oh, yeah, Christ it's like, girls. <laughs> there is love in places. Feel feel it. Um, Pop bitch described it as uh, it sounds like a song the BBC would use from their like uh, library archive of music that they would just put over their interludes uh, between shows. It's yes, just like it generic that. girl yeah. girl group pop, right? Um, a, a lot of people are Very saying generic. it's basically Little Mix tribute act, um, which. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It's an, the it's lyrics a, it's don't a, even make sense. I'm going over. I've got it played now, just with the lyrics up, with the music off, right? <laughs> okay. It's like the lyrics are nonsense as well. It feels so good in my bones, but I can take it. What do you What do you mean? Well, it, but, well yeah, of course you, you can take it because it feels it, good. It feels good. <laughs> what does that? What 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 feels good? And what are you take? What do you mean then? Yeah. This vibe yeah. will never get old. What What that, vibe? What are you on about, mate? And like, that's she's, like the, the previous co- like sentences before that, she's talking about someone making a coffee. And again, like, what? I don't get it. And it's all, and again, the repetition of it, like, you got it, we got it, we got it, you got it, you got it. We, like, oh my yeah. Christ almighty, yeah. can someone please, like, fucking fix the record here? And, that, and that's the sign of, of a good pop song, right, is that, yeah, this song sounds lively and it sounds upbeat and energetic. And, and you could see that they could do, like, quite a lively performance of it. But the real ones that win also have meaning in the lyrics and they make you feel something. And it's that combination yeah. of the two things um you know that that actually makes a memorable pop song whereas whereas this is pretty much just like words set to a rhythm and um three very competent singers singing it yeah basically. yeah you could put you could literally there's probably like bots that you could hook up and that would write the lyrics like this yeah, for you yeah like it's not <laughs> like an you know like when your mum on the fridge had one of those um poetry things where you could put the yeah. words together and write a poem or whatever yeah. and when yeah, you're yeah, a kid yeah, you just yeah. used to write like rudy things or whatever yeah um but it's basically that you could do that on that on your mum's fridge. You could write the lyrics for this. Yeah, it's a thousand monkeys and a thousand typewriters. Except this Keep is probably keep filling maybe... up my cup. It's love we're drinking. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Again, I don't want to drink your love. Uh, I'm not. I'm not spreading my love, and I don't want to drink your love. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. This is. Uh, this is. Oh bloody hell. Okay. Well, let's let's move on. And I'm sad to say that we have. Uh, uh, next up in line, we have a song by Liam Tamney, uh, the song <laughs> Astronaut. Let's listen to this. Uh, it's going to start at 1 minute one minute 25. Okay, and it's going to finish on my end at about 1 minute 27, I'll warn you. <laughs> uh, okay, right, All right here a listen. We go. That was. <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> um, <laughs> are you are you good there? Are you still with me? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, just keep going. Okay. Right. So this is this is possibly uh, the most boring song sung by, and I'm really sorry, Liam, but sung by one of the most boring <laughs> professional performers I've ever seen. They each did. It's a... one of the most boring songs of all time. <laughs> 
<laughs> they, they each did a video where they talked about themselves a little bit and literally like I had like a moment where I felt like I blacked out as soon as he started talking because I watched it all and I was like what what did he say in that like his so his 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 interesting things. So well, tell us. Oh, some tell, that please, please do know. tell me Liam's interesting um, thing. <laughs> if I if I was born a girl, I was going to be called Roisin. Um, or I don't even know. That's an Irish name. I'd probably uh, pronounce racist. it wrong. Racist. Uh, yeah, terrible. Um, I love Big Brother and the Real Housewives of New Jersey. I've recently become vegan, and that's his things that people <sighs> wouldn't know about him. Uh, it says an awful lot. I've also ri- I also wrote notes about all the acts uh, on a little uh, on my iPad. Um, his is completely blank. Uh, there's nothing. <laughs> there's no notes. And um, I think that is a metaphor for Liam himself. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, it's not it's not good, is it? The, the, the opening the opening line in the song he uses the word babe. Right, that says a lot. That says a lot about him. (laughs) That says a lot about the writers. That says a lot about the song in its in its whole. Again, the lyrics make absolutely no sense whatsoever. (laughs) None whatsoever. There's a bit in there. There's a bit in the chorus. It's like I'm going to be your astronaut. I'm going to be your astronaut. Then it's like you you know using you know using space metaphors. It's saying when you when gravity is pulling you down, when you can't breathe, just give me a call. What do you mean you? She's in space. (laughs) How is she calling you, Liam? She's in space. Are you? She hasn't got a phone, mate. Like, get sense behind this. You're an astronaut. Uh, She ain't calling you. And the song is like at least jazz. I know we we hated the uh, or you hated the uh, the meaning behind jazz's lyrics, but at least there was something we could like pull to talk about. But it's literally like. What does it? There's no, there's no meaning on this. Like I can be your astronaut. What does that fucking mean, Liam? It doesn't mean anything. You know, I told, I've said, I've definitely talked about this before on the podcast. I think, uh, but I've I've definitely told you about it before. When I was like a teenager, and we found out that this guy that I'd been dating had written a song about me, and the only we couldn't find it, but my mate had seen it, and the only lyrics he could remember was that um, uh, this unknown. A unnamed person wrote that he was going to be my knight in shining armor, uh, and it was yeah. one of the grossest things. Yeah. And it's, I, I think about it regularly and <laughs> laugh about it a lot. It's still now, this is like 13, 14 years later. Um, this this reminded me of that a lot. <laughs> I can me... be a master, like it, yeah, one of I'll as a, as a woman, as yeah. a woman. Um, I feel pretty confident to be able to speak on behalf of womankind here, right? Yes. And apologies. That of course there'll be some outliers who are who For don't sure. fit into this bracket. But as a woman, right, it is not in any way swoony or gonna make me go weak at the knees on my heart flutter to have a man say to me, I'm I could be your astronaut, you know. Because <laughs> like it's like, like sorry what? For, sorry what like what? what? What exactly? What do you mean? Or How does that help me? Like, what, gra- what are you gonna... bringing you down when you can't breathe? Yeah, I can be, I can yeah, be yeah. An astronaut. Um, what? What so... are you on about, mate? What are you gonna do as an astronaut? What are you gonna fuck? Like, I don't get it. Just spin around in orbit and just like vanish for like three years at a time because that's how long your space mission takes. So they say. So the question is, what's the most interesting aspect of your song? And Liam replies. What's so interesting about my song is that it's so relatable. <laughs> we, always, <laughs> we, we always need someone to pick us up and help us through times in our lives that are challenging and sad, whether it be flying them off to their favorite place or even into space. We can help oh, others soar in life and be true to who they are. It's not what the song's about. The song's about being an astronaut. You, like, <laughs> it's, it's not good. It's re- <laughs> no, it's really not good. It's, it's really, really not good. Not good. The guys, the men in both this year and last year, I would say the men's performances and the men's songs really were the, weak were the worst yeah. uh, out of out of all of them. So, I mean, good on you women again. But, um, but it did give me a good giggle. Yes, it made us it get, laugh. It really, and maybe... like, and I mean, like, stomach level, real <laughs> gut laugh. Maybe out loud by myself. Yeah, maybe someone just thought, look, everyone is cheering up. <laughs> Liam, sing that shit song that you wrote, mate. Really it's relatable. It's relate. No, I, I didn't mean shit. I meant relatable. Sing that relatable yes, rela- song about being an astronaut really for a girl. Astronaut. Girls love astronauts <laughs> because women are teen, you know, six-year-old yeah. boys. Um, so yeah. they really love space and astronauts. Yeah. Loads. They love space um, and astronauts. And we really want. Uh, we really, they really want an astronaut in their lives. That's um, because it's 1972, and and astronauts yeah. are sexy yeah, yeah. and exciting. Yeah. Um, or oh. they're actually like fifty-year-old um, engineers. 
Like, who aren't me. <laughs> like, yeah, sit on computers. <laughs> yeah. Liam, don't be, please don't be offended by uh, that whole bit, but that is a really shit song. So, it's uh, so bad. It's so okay, bad. we're going to move on to the last okay. of our six entries. And uh, this is Asanda with the song Legends. Because you and me were making that history. Forget who we used to be. You know we're legends Go. That was oh. Asanda with Lula Lula Legends tonight. Um, so Asanda Isabel is just sixteen years old. Shut your um, mouth. She's sixteen years old, but she didn't. She shouldn't have trouble uh, with stage fright because she appeared on the two thousand and thirteen series of Britain's Got Talent, aged just eleven. Uh, so is. she has. Yeah, she has. Uh, again, she's got performance experience. Um, I, you know what? I'm going to put myself on the line and say this is my tip of the bunch. This is my favorite of the bunch. What do you think? Yes, about? yes, yes. Back in yes. all the way. This is yes. this is the one that I not only think will when you decide, but I think should when you decide. Compare yep. it to the rest of that dross we've just listened yep. to. Christ Almighty! I mean, not actually, no, not even in in comparison to the rest of that dross. That's yep. a that's a slamming song. It's that's a really a good song, song, right? That's a really fun song. It's a bit different. Yeah. It's but it's still got that Euro vibe. Do you know what I mean? Completely. That Eurovision vibe in, in in terms of like. So actually, the description she gives on the BBC website for it, she says, uh, she says about a song. It's a unique song with a very energetic rhythm and it has a tribal yeah. feel to it. Yeah. Um, and I, I like I agree. It's got that you know that tribal beat that's very, you know very has proved very popular in Eurovision past. Yeah. Um, but it's also very fun. It's very uplifting. It's um she's got a great voice yeah completely um, legends legends that's a great yeah that's a great like yeah. inspirational we'll Eurovision tonight. word to like, be able to use it like we're gonna I be legends like tonight tonight is tonight is good because yeah. it feels like you're present on the night because tonight is like tonight's Eurovision but it's also like tonight you know good things happen at night she is yeah she's I mean, she's got uh, a lot of experience she's you know when she was on Britain's Got Talent she would prefer, perform hits by Beyonce and Rihanna and you can really hear that in, in this song as well but she's influenced by artists like Marvin Gaye Erica Badu, Celine Dion, TLC, Aaliyah. You know, she's she's coming from a genuine place. Um, and also, like, call me a liberal whatever, um, but wouldn't it be quite good to have a person who isn't white uh, representing the UK at Eurovision? Like, I know we had Jade Ewan a few years back, and she actually did very well. But Andy she Abrams? Possi- <laughs> Uh, uh, well, yeah, okay, but less well, but but like also Jade Ewan was singing possibly the whitest song ever written. Oh god, um, yeah, with Andrew Lloyd Webber on stage. So actually, to have mm. someone who isn't white performing a song, you know, that sounds like a sort of Beyonce hit or Rihanna hit, um, I think this is the this is the song that that stands out the most and what people yeah, will remember the most. And yeah. yeah, it's not necessarily a winner, but actually, it's an authentic song that people would would listen to and, and enjoy and, yeah, and I, I think she, she'd be able to perform it really well now we had this same thing last year where um one of our favorite songs uh, and i can't remember her name which is terrible but was sung by a singer who was very young and actually when she was on stage you could kind of feel her yeah. youth there so that's the only risk that i'm worried about she is currently leading the odds she's odds on favorite to, to win oh, you fantastic decide. i'm glad um, but if she can't you know really own yeah. that stage then then it will she will struggle especially with a song of this like you know you have to be a real badass to like you know yeah. work this on stage but so there, yeah I, there was there was the t- there's the two there's only two there was only two things really in terms of like my worries behind this yeah is, well actually one of them only one of them's worry which is that exact thing is yeah. that it, this is a great song it sounds great it sounds really pumping but if on the night she doesn't do it justice pff, well we're stuck with bloody jazz that jazz aren't we like yeah. that's yeah you know, that crap and going through to you oh, no, absolutely that's never gonna happen there's no jazz no. there's no way mate there's no way mate that song's gonna go through it's <laughs> awful it's abhorrent like it's really bad uh, yeah um yeah but um yeah so she's gonna have to own it to get through eurovision uh, yeah. to get through you decide um yeah. but i all but i also think with it um in a similar ilk as last year there was but 
there were caveat to this afterwards. Similar ilk to last year, I think they could go bigger on the chorus. Yeah. I think they're yeah. missing something actually there. I don't think it goes as big and as hard and as like as it could do in that chorus. Yeah. But as with last year with the Lucy Jones one where everyone was like, it's great, but you need to improve it. It's great, but you need to pump yeah. it up a bit more. And they made, is, you know, they made changes to it after you decide. And they did, completely. you know, they changed the song slightly. If, I think they need to do that and give it a bit more room to really like uh, actually get people really excited about this song. Um, but I, I really like it. Yeah, no, and I'm sure they will. Like once they, you know, once the winners are signed and and they get the BBC money behind them, you know, you can you can re-record stuff and you can invest in the production a bit more. And and so I think they they might add a little bit more. But it is definitely, you know, it's high energy. It's you know, it will you know really like put our flag on the stage and say like you know this is the song we're entering rather than entering a song that is like oh it's a bit like another Eurovision song. So it'll just it'll you know it'll be in with with all the others. But this is definitely like it's a good song, but it's different enough to. Um, uh, to sort of be mem- be memorable. So good on a Sander there. That's um, yeah. you know, that's. Uh, I, I think you and I are in agreement that that is our favourite, and that is the one that we feel would yep. do absolute best at Eurovision itself. Backing a Sander all the way. Yeah, I don't Go want any of the rest of that crap. Like if a Sander, if a, yeah, if a Sander, if Sander fluffs it on the night, yeah, uh, then I think it's going to go to what Suri. Um, Siri, yeah, that I mean, go, that's it'll the go most to Siri. Like one, she's a bit but, older. Um, she's a bit. She's definitely going to be like a composed performer on stage. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the only. Yeah, I think if it, if it doesn't go to Asanda, it'll go to Suri instead. Yeah, yeah. But the boys, no chance. It wouldn't <laughs> surprise you that Liam is bottom of the odds for Eurovision <laughs> News <laughs> side. There, poor Liam. Poor Liam. It's not a good song. Sorry. Not poor um, Liam. So- any, like these bloody. Any, you know, I, I, you know, I bloody hate a musician anyway. But like, just anyone who's a performer of any type, you're putting yourself out yeah. there in that sense. Yet you want to be famous. Yet you want to be able to do your craft, or yeah. your art, whatever you're gonna call it. But <laughs> also have some awareness of like what you're singing and what you're involved yeah. with. Like yeah. why? Yet you want to right, You want to be taken seriously as a performer. Don't sing a shitty song about astronauts then. Like, don't sing literally the dullest song ever written. That's about an Don't astronaut. sing a shit song about astronauts. Yeah, that makes complete sense. So there you go. That's the six acts that are going to be performing on the... And we'll find out who will be the winner on the 7th of February. So we will all be tuned in. I'm going to... Um, I think it will be while I'm at work. So I'm going to try and secretly, as long as my boss isn't <laughs> listening, uh, listen in on my earphones. Uh, otherwise, I'll go home and watch it and try and avoid any news. And have you um, seen but- him? Have you seen who's presenting it? Yes, I have. It's uh, the uh, classic favourite Mel Gidrick yep. uh, with my... Uh, and I've actually just started listening to his albums again and fallen in love with him all over <laughs> again. It's the Swedish stunner Mans Zemelov, uh, who is amazing. Seriously, those albums that he makes, like, I don't know what they do to me, but they are something <laughs> else. Um, Mel and Mans, though. Album. What a great little Mel and Mon. It's gonna be. It will be really good. I think. Like, I wish I was able to go and see them because uh, I think they'll have a lot of fun together. Um, I think that's a really good panel, and they're doing it down in Brighton in a bigger venue, so that should be a lot of fun as well. So I feel like they've got that right. We're just hoping for a Sander, Isabel. There's two more things I want to tell you before um, we end. Okay. Um, one, have mm. you heard the news about who? Uh, is in the running to represent Denmark at Eurovision. No. In the running to represent Denmark this year is the one and only singer of 90s classic Saturday Night, Wigfield. No, shut up. Absolutely. So she's going under the name Sani, uh, which is her real name, which is, I don't know, that's not a great name, but um, (laughs) she is in the running... um, with a track, and I haven't heard it. I don't think it's been released yet, but the title is very, uh, gives gives me a lot of hope for the track. So Wigfield, um, with the track called Boys on Girls, and I feel like Ooh. that's a really good name for a song. Um, Excellent. So we are we are holding out to hear that. She, it, she will be performing in the uh, Melody Grand Prix, uh, which will be coming up in the next few days, I think. So, oh, really? Um, oh, I'll very I'll exciting. I'll watch then. One last thing, Isabel, and this made yeah. me very excited to seeing today, which is as of recording, and uh, we're going to try and release this as soon as possible, so it may still be the case over here. We are officially 100 days away from Eurovision 2018. 
Oh, it's coming. <laughs> it's, it is oh. coming. Uh, and it will be upon us before we know it. So we just have to count down 100 days and then it will be here. Oh, mate. Oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> isn't that everyone? Isn't that a good feeling, right? Isn't 100 that a good days. feeling? feeling, that feeling and in that inside. time, there's so much music to oh, listen to because so there's all much. of these finals. There's all of the country's yeah. uh, competitions to be able to go through as well. Oh, great stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, lovely. So there we go. Right, we're going to have to wrap it up. I've got places to be. I'm going to the Met to You've see some You've got nowhere to be. <laughs> Ian, he ain't uh, got anywhere to be. I'm staying in, in my pyjamas for the rest of the night. Me and the cat have settled in. To- I need to change out of my pyjamas. I feel a, a bit scummy now. It's 2.30 and I'm still in my pyjamas. Uh, can I just make a point of saying I've yeah. not been in my pyjamas all day? No, no, no. You've come I've, home and got into your pyjamas. Yeah, I've been that's out. Fine. I've been doing stuff. I just wanted yeah. to put my jammies back on. I'm just doing it in reverse and that's that's okay too. Um, but there we go, Isabel. That's it. Our first one cross-continental seemed like it, it went worked. pretty well, right? Well, it you've works. got to edit it now. But it works we'll for now. Yeah, it seems like it works. Um, thank you for listening, everyone. We're going to be back with a full episode, not this Thursday, but the following Thursday, because we're doing it once every two weeks. Yeah. Um, and that is my turn to write something. And we will also be continuing yeah. our uh, venture to creatively, collaboratively, communitively come up with a <laughs> uh, song for next year so that the we have a little bit more. The Eurovision song. Uh, yeah, the world's greatest Eurovision song. So there we go. Yeah. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. But um, if you do want to, if you disagree with anything we've said, if you want to contact us oh, in yeah. any way or, or speak to us or just like say hi or um, just tell yeah. me I look cute. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you want to do that. <laughs> you can do that via email um, at euphoriapodcast at gmail.com or you can contact us on Twitter, which is at euphoriacast. There we go, everyone. Thank you for listening, and we will see you in about a week and a half. Love you. Bye. Bye.